I'm Dr. Dylan Greeny and I treat hair loss daily. I'm gonna jump into all the treatments that you can do for hair, including ones that you can do at home and start today. No matter what the treatment I talk about today, know that consistency with your treatment is gonna be the best way to grow your best hair. Each treatment takes time and patience. Let's get into everything from over-the-counter to prescription oral and topical treatments to vitamins to light therapies and procedures. And if you know somebody struggling with hair loss, feel free to share the video with them. And if you don't subscribe, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I like to give helpful, affordable tips to help you get your best hair, skin, and nails. So the good news is most forms of hair loss can be stopped or slowed or improved with early treatment. Not that I wanna to get too scientific with it today, but hair goes through a few phases. Antigen phase, which is the growth phase, catagen phase, which is like a transition phase in your hair, and telogen phase, which is a resting or when your hair begins to shed. The most common type of hair loss is called pattern hair loss, like androgenetic alopecia. And this can happen to both men and women. For a lot of guys, you'll see it thinning in the frontal temporal area, or the vertex of the scalp, which is the crown of the scalp. And for women, usually you preserve the front hairline, but you kind of lose the central area of the hair. Guys are more likely to go completely bald, while women rarely lose all of their hair. Now this common type of hair loss is mostly caused by a hormone called DHT, which is a strong version of testosterone that both men and women have. It causes shrinking of hair follicles, miniaturization of the hairs, and ultimately hair loss. Let's get into the first of many treatments I'll talk about. It's one you might know about called minoxidil, but it comes in another form that you may not know about. So let's talk about the topical one because that's one that you could use today, start it at home, easy peasy. Minoxidil comes in a solution or a foam, and this can be applied to the scalp once or twice daily. I personally like the 5% concentration and I like to use it twice per day. The reason I say that is because studies show that that works the best. Now you can use the foam or the solution. The foam is a little bit easier to control. It sometimes has a mousse-like consistency to it that you can apply to your scalp. The solution, of course, is like water. It's a little bit more liquidy. Totally depends on whichever one you prefer. I've used them both. I like them both. I guess if I had to pick one or the other, I like the foam a little bit more. But whichever one that you find you can consistently use, that's the one for you. Now, how it works is it actually vasodilates. It opens up the blood vessels, allows the hair roots to get more blood flow and nutrients so they can grow their best. It also prolongs the antigen phase of hair growth so you have more consistently actively growing hair, ultimately leading to more hair follicles and hair follicles that have a broader diameter, so thicker hair and more hair follicles themselves. Now, remember, when you start this treatment, it can take up to three months to show any results. So at three months, you might notice tiny little baby hairs that we hope to nurture into fully actively growing hairs that are thick. And the thing you might have heard about or worried about is if you stop this treatment, are you going to lose all your hair? And that's not true. You will lose the benefit that you gained, however. So if you're already noticing hair thinning, then you absolutely need to start this treatment and get it going now and continue with it to get the benefits just like you get benefits of brushing your teeth every single morning. Now, one thing that might freak you out is when you first start this treatment over the first few weeks or even the first month, you might notice a little increase in hair shedding. And it's adios to those resting hairs and the hairs that were gonna fall out already, and that's making room for those new actively growing hairs. So a pro tip for those using topical minoxidil is if you have tretinoin, which is a great anti-aging cream that so many of you use if you love skincare, this can increase the absorption of your topical minoxidil. It may increase irritation, but it increases absorption and arguably it may also increase enzyme activity in your skin that helps to boost the efficacy of the minoxidil. Now let's take minoxidil to the next level. There's actually a prescription that you can get from your doctor called oral minoxidil. That's a pill version of Rogaine or minoxidil. And you can take it by mouth and it helps to encourage hair growth from the inside out. This has been studied and shown to be as effective as topical solutions. Now the benefit of this one is it is more affordable and there's less risk of scalp irritation because anything you put on your skin potentially can cause some flaking and some scalp itching and things like that. So when you take it by mouth, you don't have to worry about the scalp itching. You don't wanna have to worry about how the foam or solution sits in your hair. You take this as a simple once daily pill. It can be used in both men and women and sometimes the dose does change. For a lot of women, I'll start them at a dose of 1.25 milligrams a day. And for guys, I'll start at 2.5 milligrams a day. If everything's going smoothly, sometimes I increase that dose upwards to five milligrams a day. Minoxidil, you may not know, is actually a blood pressure medicine, but it's such a small dose that it's unlikely to change your blood pressure. There are a few things that can happen when taking oral minoxidil, like a little bit of mild leg swelling, and for some people, they get hair growth in the areas where they wouldn't like it. If you notice that excess hair growth, of course, you can stop the medicine and that will cease to happen. If you are one of the people that are sensitive to the 
blood pressure medicine. Sometimes people can stand up, feel a little lightheaded or dizzy. You can always check your blood pressure. That's something, of course, you would want to talk with with your doctor. This has been one of the most exciting treatments for hair loss over the last decade. So remember when I mentioned the enzyme for the topical minoxidil that you could boost with tretinoin? Some studies have shown that oral minoxidil sometimes bypasses that and it becomes less important. So people that maybe didn't respond to topical minoxidil will respond to oral minoxidil. Next up, we'll talk about a treatment that's been trending all over the internet. It's been used for a little bit of everything and mainly known for anti-aging, but it's called PRP or platelet-rich plasma. This is a very cool procedure in which you go to your doctor's office, your own blood is drawn, it's run through a centrifuge which separates your blood cells out. And then the platelet-rich plasma, which is rich in growth factors, is injected into your scalp. Now that's the downside of it, right? It's a lot of pokes in the scalp, which can hurt. Now, a lot of times when I do this for patients, I use a little machine called a Zimmer Chiller. It blows super cold air on your scalp, which definitely minimizes the pain from injections. Now, this isn't a one and done treatment. This is something that's done over a period of time, usually in packages of three or so with ongoing maintenance. And rarely do I use this as what we call a monotherapy or just using it by itself. Now with PRP, some people are like super responders to it. They do amazing. And some people, honestly don't respond at all. And it's really, really frustrating. So for me, I always try to focus on doing what I call the low hanging fruit, the things that have the most evidence that they're the cheapest, the easiest, the least painful. But for people that want to do a little bit of everything to treat their hair, I add PRP. So when you think PRP, think about combination treatments. Maybe you're already using the topical minoxidil, oral minoxidil, plus the PRP. You can even combine PRP with the next treatment we'll talk about called red light therapy. This is one of the most natural treatments for hair loss. It's perfect for those who don't want to undergo procedures or take medications. It's painless, it's easy to do from home. And in my patients, red lights often combine with some of the other treatments that I discussed previously. Because time is hair, I wanna do everything I can to help my patients save their hair. So I wanna give a big thank you to Current Body for sponsoring this video and hopefully helping save your hair follicles. Current Body uses light around the 640 nanometer wavelength to treat the entire scalp. This wakes up hair follicles by boosting ATP, which is cellular energy. It reduces inflammation, it inhibits the production of that DHT enzyme that we talked about, which reminder is the most important hormone in hair miniaturization and loss. It also increases blood flow, bringing oxygen and nutrients to the skin to grow your best hair. The LEDs are three times more powerful on average than other devices on the market. The device is suitable for both men and women as soon as you're noticing hair thinning. The earlier you start treatment, the better. If you have completely bald areas, red light unfortunately will not be effective for you in those areas. This device has shown to increase hair growth by 128% in 12 weeks. I've used it for months, it's portable, it's easy to use for just 10 minutes a day. It even has built-in Bluetooth headphones so I can keep listening to YouTube during my treatment. Red light therapy is one of the most natural treatments for hair loss. So if you wanna start a current body today, you can use the code in my description to save some money. So let's depart for some of these natural treatments and get into things that sometimes can get a little bit more dicey, like finasteride. Finasteride like minoxidil can be used both topically or orally. And this prescription medicine actually messes with your hormones some. It effectively lowers that DHT hormone that we talked about that can shrink hair follicles. Now, some people feel more comfortable applying this topically to work just locally on the hair follicles and not take a pill that's gonna affect their whole system. Now, through the skin, you do still get some absorption, but it's obviously way different than taking a pill. A lot of times, if you get this topical prescription, it's combined with other treatments like minoxidil. So the risk with this one isn't zero. You're still applying it to your scalp. You could get scalp irritation, of course. You do absorb a little bit into your body too, but it can effectively minimize that DHT interaction in your hair follicle to help you grow more hair and prevent hair shrinkage. Now, finasteride is a pill. It's one of the most studied hair loss medicines that we use. But given that it does affect your hormones, people do worry sometimes about the sexual side effects because because testosterone can be helpful for sex drive, erections in men, and things like that. Now, when you look at all the information, some of these side effects tend to happen in young men under 40, usually with a history of anxiety and depression. For most people, they get no problems at all. They just grow more hair. For the guys out there that are dealing with that frontal hair loss, finasteride is really one of the most proven ingredients for it, and it's one you'll have to discuss with your doctor. There's also been over history discussion about prostate cancer, and since this can suppress DHT levels, it might mean that there's less risk of prostate cancer overall, but also if you do get prostate cancer, it may be detected at a later stage. So without a doubt, this is something you'd wanna talk about with your doctor, but I'm here to give you all your options so you can ask those great questions. Now, there's not a day in my clinic that a patient doesn't 
doesn't ask me about hair loss vitamins. You've seen all of these options out there for hair loss vitamins. Now, these are touted as miracles a lot of time. There's a ton of marketing that goes into it. That's the nature of the supplement industry. I'm gonna focus on one today called Wellbell, and this is a nice formulated vitamin. Now, the trouble with any of these vitamins is they are a little bit pricey, and I view them all as the cherry on top of doing other things. Now, there's some people out there who just never take a medicine, and sure, go ahead and throw these hair loss vitamins in. The thing I like about Wellbell is a couple things. One, vitamin D is one of the vitamins that can affect your hair growth. And you wanna make sure you have adequate vitamin D levels, obviously in a safe way, not going out and getting baked in the sun, but you can supplement it. It's interesting, a lot of hair loss vitamins don't contain vitamin D. And I don't know if it's because it's a fat soluble vitamin that can kind of build up in your body, but a lot of hair loss vitamin companies don't put vitamin D in their products. Interestingly enough, as a dermatologist, that's one of the few vitamin levels that I check for in hair loss. Now, the other thing you gotta look out for is excessive levels of biotin. Biotin is something that we've heard over a whole life is beneficial for your hair, skin, and nails. Now, while it might be beneficial for your nails, there's actually not a lot of evidence to show that it's particularly helpful for your hair. And sometimes super high levels of biotin can actually interfere with lab testing, which can be a problem. I like Wellbell because while it does have a fairly high level of biotin, it's not ridiculous. And it also contains vitamin D, which to be honest, most of us are deficient in. So for me, hair loss vitamins are the cherry on top. I think if you're doing other things, or maybe you're somebody that really doesn't wanna take medicines, throw them in your routine. It's fine as long as it's not breaking the bank. Vitamins sometimes can fill that micronutrient void that maybe you don't always get from your diet. So the better you can do with a well-balanced diet and maybe throw a vitamin in there, you're good to go. I'm gonna talk briefly about hair transplant before I give you my top recommendation for hair loss. So hair transplants come a long way. And most of the time, if you go to get a hair transplant, you're gonna be doing all these other therapies too, because you wanna do everything you can to preserve what hair you have. And if you get transplants, you gotta protect those follicles too. So you're usually still gonna take medication. Hair transplants come a long way. They used to have to cut out strips, leave big scars on the scalp and that. So hair transplants come a long way. Now they can extract small groups of follicles and transplant those in a way that doesn't leave you with a big obvious scar, which is great. And of course, hair transplants are very expensive, but for some people with serious areas of hair loss, but still good areas of their scalp that they can extract follicles from, this can be a game changer. Remember, it doesn't end with a transplant. You're gonna have to do the other things to help continue to support your hair. So I love all of these treatments for hair loss and I use them every single day in all of my patients. But if I could only pick one medication, I think for me, it's oral minoxidil. It's safe, it's effective, it's affordable, and it's easy to take just once a day. Not only that, but it tends to help not only androgenetic alopecia like we've talked about mostly, but almost any type of hair loss, it tends to improve. Gosh, so we've covered minoxidil PRP, red light therapy, finasteride vitamins. There's no single magic bullet. Consistency is key. I definitely encourage you, if you're dealing with hair loss, to see a board certified dermatologist. There's no better expert out there for the hair, skin, and nails. Remember to take those photos regularly to gauge your progress along the way. And again, I'm a dermatologist that deals with hair loss every single day. So I want you to leave your questions below. I'm one of the most accessible dermatologists on social media, and I love answering your questions. So remember, if you don't subscribe, make sure to do that and share this video with a friend if they're dealing with hair loss. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.